99.7. Usher in studio taking over Q99.7. Dude, it is good to see you, man. It is great to be seen. <laughs> Better to be seen than viewed. Right? <laughs> <laughs> My dad used to tell you that joke all the time. Am I, am I doing dad jokes? Oh, dad, dad jokes. I don't yeah, think that's a compliment. Off wrong. <laughs> that's, that's not <laughs> too early, man. <laughs> <laughs> so I know this already happened, but on the air officially, this is Kristen, yes. this is Abby, this is Mo, this is the Burt Show in the afternoon, man. It's good to see you. How's everybody doing? Good, really so good. good. So the story I was about to tell you, okay. where I stopped and I said, I'll just embarrass myself on the show. Please do. So, dude, you, you just kicked ass on, I don't know if you know this, but you did pretty well on that Super Bowl halftime <laughs> show. I'm not sure if anybody told you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I heard it from somebody. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't 202.4 million people that saw it. Yeah. yeah. It was pretty good. It was amazing. It was amazing for Atlanta, too, by the way. Oh, it was that's, huge. So that's where I'm going with this. So uh, you and I haven't talked in 15 years or whatever, right? Yeah, it's been a minute. It has been a minute. <laughs> we haven't rubbed elbows at parties, right, you know, or anything right. like that. But I got so caught up. <laughs> there you go. Again, <laughs> cliche. Uh, in your performance, yeah. not only for you, but for Atlanta, Absolutely. that I immediately got on Instagram and I DM'd you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and shocker, you didn't respond. That's, and that's totally okay. That's all good. My bad. My bad. I, I, yeah, it kind of got lost in the. The yeah, I bet. Space. Well, it, I'm sure I, you got a few. Yeah, we were thinking <laughs> yeah, right after you performed the Super Bowl, you probably got a few people sliding in your DMs to congratulate you for a job well done. I never respond to those uh, DMs. Do you have some? Do you actually check any of your social, or do you have somebody do that for you? Uh, no, nah, I check some of them, yeah. but not but not all of them. Yeah. Um, but on on occasion, you know, I might I might respond. People are mean out there. I would never check it if I didn't have to. No. You're smart. So if it's okay, um, you notice this bottle of champagne when you walk in the it. room, right? Tr- are we looking at it or are we going to drink it? We're going to drink it. That's okay. Okay. So Let's get up. I, we were sitting here and we're prepping for your interview, and I'm like, man, new album, new tour, that killer uh, Super Bowl halftime. You got married. Ooh. We're giving away 100 bucks every 10 minutes. Ooh. You got six shows in Atlanta coming up. Oh. Um, we, did, we need to celebrate. That sounds like a reason to celebrate. Um, so uh, I brought in some We're dog. not drinking alone. Y'all have yes. a... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Which, did you think it was just a you and her thing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and pop this bottle of Dom Perignon, and we're going to pour it, and we're going to... You guys keep chatting, and we're going we're gonna to do a nice little cheers. Cause don't mind the bubbles. Don't mind All right. the bubbles. There's a lot to talk about, man. Yeah. So we brought it up initially, so let's just go ahead and stay go. there. What? Yeah. No, Super Bowl. Yes. Not the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going. We're not, that's done. That's long, long Yo, gone. By, by the way, on the heels of one of the most incredible albums of my uh, catalog, right, Confessions 20 years later, we got to talk a little bit about some of that moment and the amazing things that happened in it. Because of that moment, I got to tell you some things that happened. Uh, okay. Oh, you oh, want to wow. yeah. start that? Well, no, no, no. We'll have to eventually. We'll get there. I, I mean, I'll be here for a minute. You don't, you're yeah. not ready for me to leave, right? Okay. No, absolutely no, not. Let's get started. <laughs> so well, my hope is that you'll forget, and then we won't have to cover it at all by the end of the interview. <laughs> 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 well, let's start there. Let's just go ahead and start there. Okay. All okay. right. What do you, what, what? Tell so, so, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who weren't here 20 years ago, we just had a conversation about the fact that we hadn't really had a combo maybe in the last 18, mm-hmm. maybe 20 years, right? So the woman who I was dating at the time, uh, Chili, she had a conversation with you, mm-hmm. right? Right before you came out. It was a couple of days before you it came was. in. It and was. the timing was just either really good or really bad. And by the way, and as a, as a journalist, you did your job by making certain that you gave her the space and then reported what you saw or heard and also to what you guys spoke about, right? So, oh, pop. There we go. <laughs> right there, right there. So, so now, uh, the ultimate no-no came out of that conversation. That's what and she said, not me. That's what she said. Uh-huh. And when that ultimate no-no then led to the conversation that became Confessions. After that dialogue, the conversation of, oh, did Usher get a girl pregnant on Chili? It all started right here with this man. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> oh, don't tell him that. I didn't know this. Yo, just so you did not know, that's what I'm saying. No. So, so what happened is, after that combo... That then spun the combo of, and by the way, we were still in the middle of me and her kind of, we were still talking, but not really, and we kind of moved past the idea of being in a relationship, but hey, the ultimate no-no was what it was, and after that, the Confessions album came out, and the rest is history, wow. but it was such intrigue, and this, so, this goes to show you how radio and how Bert does it, right? Mm-hmm. If he has a conversation, all of a sudden, I guess people just naturally gravitate to us, and it becomes credible, right? So that becomes Mr. Usher Raymond's getting girls pregnant 
And he's in relationships with celebrities. I get it. <laughs> So what she had said was that, the ultimate no-no. Yeah. And then, we didn't even say what the, she didn't say what the uh-uh. ultimate no-no was. I think we could all assume what yeah. it was, though, right? Yeah. You know what happens when you assume? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> You're ready for that drink, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about Ooh. to down that whole bottle the way this thing started. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. We're ready. Okay, so, those glasses are for you, the bottle is for me. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you came in here, you were pretty fired up that yeah, day. Yeah, I was hot. You were really, really hot. Yeah. And I hate to do I hate bringing this back up because I, I told these guys I didn't want to even go back down this road. Well, we're celebrating it now because okay. it became a success of uh, almost 20 million albums sold. Great. Yes. Thank you. Sounds like it was the springboard to something really, really great. But you said, yeah, give me some of that. And tequila. <laughs> um, you said something to the effect of this show is responsible for the breakup of you and Chili. Yeah. And that's when I said, wait a minute. Yeah. You know, you got to be responsible for your a- actions. And then we got into it. And, uh, man, it's past us. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. How about putting the past in the past? Yeah. yeah. We buried it yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. We did. And now we're going to put champagne on it. Yeah. There you go. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. I did not know that that was sort of the springboard for the album and everything else. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and among other things, conversation sure. and beefs that were not really beefs. It was more like uh-huh. for tutory or something like that. Really <laughs> <Yeah. Cutely. laughs> so, how much of the stuff, if you read it at all, or do you have people around you telling you about the rumors that are going on about you? Yeah. What's the percentage of that that is actually true? Um, I, I don't spend enough time reading or um, getting shouldn't. caught up with what you know perception is, reality is, the work that I put in. And part of this is the fact that you know I gave up my anonymity many, many mm-hmm. years ago, so people are going to have an opinion or have something to say. Um, that's for them, you know, and rather it's now social media that chooses to have everybody be a journalist and say what they feel right. and it be credible or either having people who will sit in your position to kind of narrate and give an understanding of where things are. I don't really focus on any of it. Um, everything that I offer as an artist uh, is in the music and the creatives that I offer. Uh, the rest of it is an opinion. You know, we are human, and at some point, everybody has a human experience. Unfortunately, I have to have mine in front of the entire right. world. Mm-hmm. Right. But that doesn't then open up dialogue and communication between the world. You know, what is personal is personal. Mm-hmm. What is, you know, music and what is our personal connection is the music and entertainment. So, yeah. Do you feel like people have an entitlement because, especially for musicians, your art can be so personal? Yeah, to some extent, yes. I mean, and people feel like they know you. Because they're listening to your story, or at least chapters of your story, the things that you've experienced in your life, uh, the things that you've either, you know, felt that maybe other people can identify with. Mm-hmm. Or maybe you helped them get through good times, maybe or hard times, and you they gave them good times. But, um, yeah, it's, you know, that, that that's our connection. You know, but otherwise, I don't really get, I don't go down far enough to look in the comics section. Mm-hmm. section. Is if, I, if I choose to, it's like, all right, got to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not for me. That's not where I'm at. For yeah. as much as this industry and music has given you in your life, has it also robbed you of the ability to be able to trust people? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a bit hard because you're not, you don't, I mean, w- with every conversation, I guess it, in, it initially starts with, I'm going to judge you for face value, but I don't know what you want from me. And maybe there's something that I may say that may be misinterpreted. So the less I say, the better. Uh, also, to this mantra that I think I picked up is the smartest man in the room is the one who's the most silent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I listen, you know, and, and I try to have combo, you know. It's, but for the most part, I'm like, all right, let's, yeah. When did you learn that? At mm-hmm. what age and at what stage in your career did you learn that lesson where you got, like, somebody severely burned you or they, they broke your trust and you're like, I'm going to have to start keeping stuff close to the vest? By the way, it's just life. Yeah. You know, it, it's not one specific gotcha. person. It's actually watching other people go through things mm-hmm. and then probably experiencing it firsthand yourself. But um, not one experience or any other. I just, you know, I, I have friendships and, you know, the things that I have been able to offer in my music again, doesn't open a conversation and dialogue with each and every person about everything that happens in my life. Makes it, sense. It's Q99.7, Usher taking over the station today. Yeah. Spe- speaking of rumors and things that people put on you, I have, I've always wanted to ask you this personally. I know they put this mantra on you of Mr. Steal Your Girl, and I, and I feel like you embrace <laughs> it, but you didn't ask for huh? it. 
And, <laughs> see, exactly. What? So, what are you talking about? so my podcast, I, I had it, I had it going for you for about three weeks because I got a thing with my girl <laughs> where you're the only guy who I've ever had to deal with hearing your name yelled in my ear by my girl, and I don't want to get into the details. I don't oh. think it's necessary. <laughs> and you're okay. Wait, back up. Oh, nah, 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 nah. We well, can well, just move shit, past ladies it, ladies and gentlemen. Hold on. <laughs> she screams my name while you're at what? In nah, your nah, ear? nah, nah, nah. It, it, it was, it was, it was, it was your mute. It was your music. It was just the music. <laughs> yeah. She, it, nah. to, to, to the point where I was going to take her to Vegas to see you, and she got so excited that I backed out of it. I was like, see, you got too excited. You you, you messed it up. But, but, <laughs> That's but not I, fair. No, it's not. That's dirty. See, no. he's different from me. I don't You're care right. who my lady is thinking about so long as I'm actually there. <laughs> okay, see, that's a whole different another time. That's a different kind of problem. <laughs> but does does that ever bother you that I know you didn't ask for that, and I know that I feel like that was kind of forced on you? Uh, that's actually not my handle. That's uh, Trey Songs, Mr. Studio. He Grill. says it, but I feel like they give you more pressure for it. Yeah. Um. N- um. No. 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 I'm not. I'm not actually trying to steal anybody's girl. And to be honest, uh, when coming to my show, it's an experience, and that's yeah. what I wanted. I wanted people to come to Las Vegas, or either if you've ever been to a show of mine, I have. I sing, you know, to the women. Of course, there's more women there sometimes than there are guys. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes or every time. Every time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his audience. There's nothing wrong with that. But you, you're playing to an audience that wants to have an experience. That's fine. And that was an intimate experience in Las Vegas. Uh, I actually received more requests for women to notice them than guys being mad because mm. they thought maybe it was something. But nah. Um, Will the tour be that way? Uh, it could be. Yeah. <laughs> Is that a personal request? Hey. Uh, sure, it sounds like it. <laughs> nah, but maybe. every time, every time I um I do those types of shows, I wanted it, I wanted to have something that was um a bit of the classic R and B kind of experience where you literally serenade. A woman, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? You kind of sing to her, you cater to her, feed her some strawberries and a little champagne. Yeah, maybe a little, a little champagne and and really put her on the spot and you know. But it's 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 more for fun. Yeah. Uh, never, I don't think I went home with anybody. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, mm. but <laughs> people came for a show. You gave them a show. They came for a show and they left mm, with who they came with. <laughs> <laughs> Two ninety nine seven usher taking over today. So on the flip side, I mean, I know Mo's girl is all about you, but do you, don't, does that don't bring her up? <laughs> <laughs> but does that put pressure on your relationships with so many will, women across the world having a thing for Usher? Uh, what I do is for the sake of entertainment, and that is it. Um, does it put pressure on uh, a, the relationship? Um, you know, my my wife knows who who I am as an entertainer, and she knows who she married. Uh, let's talk about that for a second. If yeah. you're comfortable, if you're comfortable. Yeah. So it's Super Bowl halftime. It's like the night of your life. Yeah. I like to space out my core memories. <laughs> you like to get them all done in one night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of like an all-in guy. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> so you get done with this performance. The adrenaline, I'm sure, is just coursing through your veins. And then you get married that night? Who doesn't want to be married and officiated by Elvis Presley. Right. <laughs> let's come on. Let's be real here now. Um, me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm curious. Was that a spontaneous, like, in the moment? This it can only get better with one more thing. Is if we get married, or was that pre-planned? No, nah, it was a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, I, I had been engaged for uh, two years prior. Um, so uh, it was a great opportunity for us to be able to celebrate. We had talked about it two years before. And we're trying to find the right time to make certain that everybody was there. And um, we got our certificate a few days actually before, actually two nights before. And um, we're like, okay, well, maybe we'll do it the week of. We just kind of thought, you know what, let's do it right now. This is the greatest, this is the greatest moment. Let's, let's, let's do it right now. So we just decided to go ahead and get it done. Our kids were there, uh, family members were there. Not everybody. I'm going to have a full ceremony. But, you know, it's probably a... You know, cost-effective way to do this thing. <laughs> and, uh, and, you really worried about that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but but, but that Elvis, Elvis yeah. was really the the end all. Be like, nah, we got it. <laughs> you don't want to hold Elvis up, right? No. How does the w- one of the most romantic <laughs> men in the world, or at least impression-wise, yeah. it's got to be a lot of pressure in that proposal. So, how romantic was the proposal? What did you do? The proposal, um. The proposal was very personal. It was between me uh, and her, uh, and we happened to be um, 
at a family member's home. And it was an impromptu thing that, um, you know, I'd been kind of, I wasn't the guy who was taking the photo with the ring, mm. you know, the entire <laughs> month before. Behind her back. <laughs> right. Behind her back in her hand. I wasn't that dude. Right. But I, but I definitely had it long enough to analyze when the perfect mama would be. And our kids were there. Yeah. I, I don't even need to tell you guys if you just tuned in that you know that voice. That's yeah. Usher on Q99.7. Um, I, w- I want to go even mm-hmm. further back. So I have a friend who um, they actually moved different states to help their son with their with his uh, football career. He's mm-hmm. only a sophomore in high school. Family uproots themselves to help pr- him pursue his passion. Right. And I know your family did that for you when you were younger. They saw the talent and they were like, we're moving to Atlanta where there's opportunity. Yeah. And I was, you know, obviously that's a huge sacrifice. Um, do you think you do you think you would still be sitting here with all those accolades and where you are now had your family not made that sacrifice? Um, Were you destined? I mean, I think there was opportunity that was greater for our entire family in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just for my career. My career also too could stand to benefit from being closer to a major city. Chattanooga, Tennessee, is where I'm originally from, mm-hmm. um, but Atlanta is home for me. Uh, my mother was married at the time. Uh, she was married to a man who was a truck driver, and his business, uh, you know, primarily was was located in Atlanta. So okay. it made it made it. It was a more accommodating thing for him, that led to something great for me. Yeah. And I do feel like there's. But a... do you think that your career would have been different? Yeah. yeah no, I think I would have been just yeah. as much in pursuit, mm. um, and I would have found a way because I was in a major uh, major city. It made it easier, but I think. Um, I was so heavily uh, pursuing upon a career, and once I recognized what I wanted to do, I happened to be 11 or 12 years old when I recognized, wait a minute, I'm not going to be an athlete. You know, um, I'm, I'm okay in school, but not a scholar in that way. I'll get a doctorate for another reason. But I wanted to, you can catch that joke, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 the, so the idea of finding focus and finding a purpose at a younger age was like, okay, I'm committed to this, and I wasn't going to stop until I figured out how to do it successfully. Yeah, because I feel like your destiny will find you no matter which route you take. So no matter which route you would have taken, we still would have you in this chair having just performed the Super Bowl halftime show. Beautiful thing how destiny and affirmation works, right? Mm -hmm. Among, you know, your ideas and your hopes, your dreams, you know, there are other things that then happen that are incredible, that then make up a career. But so long as you have an idea of where you want to go you can you can get there you just have to stay committed to that concept and idea um yeah it probably would have led me here or maybe you wouldn't have been here maybe we would have been somewhere else i know right if it were not intended for us to have this moment we wouldn't have i know there, he can't help but be sexy so now here you are like 35 years or whatever from the beginning do you ever take any time at all to reflect on the impact that you've had on not only in Atlanta, but the impact that you've had in the industry also? Are you waiting for like retirement for all that? Or do you allow yourself to embrace it? I mean, of course. Um, You know, I have to remind myself daily. I think I have reached an age where I now am okay with accepting the work that I have done. Most of my life has been built and getting to the next job, getting to the next focus, getting to the next thing to really zero in on. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Well, but I now have mm-hmm. reached a place where I'm actually okay with celebrating some of the things that I've done. They're pretty miraculous. You know, you know, I was just, you know, looking at this, you know, you know, trophy that I have in my house that isn't even a, a Grammy. It's it's not an Oscar, but it's an NBA team that won the Cleveland Cavaliers. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty major that I did that in this lifetime. <laughs> or, you know, winning these Grammys. That's pretty That's pretty good. We're selling 1.1 million units after the Burt conversation <laughs> with Chili. You know, <laughs> that's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. No, nah, but I, um, I, I've, I'm, 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 I'm happy that people recognize what I've done. That has been really all about my passion. Um, I'm proud of what I've done, but it's not all that I'm going to do. I want to do more. I want to offer more. I hope that this is an example, you know, of what can happen if you choose to believe in your dream, you know, and, you know, rather it's in this field or others, it's about being committed and dedicated um, and sticking to that until something happens, 
Yeah. We're going to get into the new music. We're going to get into Usher's tour here in a couple of seconds also. In your reflecting, do you ever feel the need to compete with old Usher when you're working on your new project coming Absolutely. home? Absolutely. You do? <laughs> <laughs> you can take him down? I'll be trying to tear him down every time I'm in the gym, every time I'm in the studio, I'm trying to outdo me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But And that is how you should live your life. You should be in competition with yourself to better yourself, to outdo what you have done as your best time, you know? Whether you're an athlete or you're an artist, right? It's like, okay, I really want to continue to be as committed as I was at this moment. And now you got a million and one other things. You got kids, you got a job, you got, you know, other passions, things, and you're trying to figure out how to manage to make your days work. And there's only 24 hours in it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, I stay in competition with myself. Not one specific thing. Like, oh, I sold this amount of albums, so I have to know. It's more about, hey, I had a certain focus. I had a certain passion. I had a certain commitment. So I have to move things around. Sometimes I have to, you know, beg of my family. Give me enough space to be able to focus on this. I'll be back. But I really got to focus on this. That's mm. important to surround yourself with the people that can really help you flourish. That's true. And I'm happy to have kids and a wife that understand that because sometimes, you know, I, I you know, I might miss incredible moments, mm-hmm. but it's like I, I'm really dedicated to this thing and I gotta I need to finish it. Uh, when I finish it, I'll be right. You can do it with me, but you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I have to stay committed to this. Now, is that is that why there were um, I want I want to use the word so many more years between albums on this one than there were in the past because you were focusing on other things in your life that you felt more important. A little bit of it. On the other half, it's just that I just wasn't ready to let it go. I, um, I think I overanalyzed everything. Analysis paralysis. Mm-hmm. You know? And then just begin to collect a ton of things. And from that said, all right, well, how am I now going to you know, begin to distribute some of these things that I've been collecting? By the way, went into a pandemic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that, actually that was a buzzkill, wasn't it? That yeah, yeah. another year and a half, you know. But, Let's well, do this. WWQ Atlanta. I, I don't know what that I was. I was starting to malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do you guys hear that or is that just me? <laughs> oh, we just hit the top of the hour. Um, <laughs> your, your tour is called Past, Present, Future. Yeah. So I was curious... Go back in time to your 15-year-old self. Yeah. What would you like to tell 15-year-old Usher? And then travel to the future to 75-year-old Usher. What would you like to ask him? That dude Ooh. barely can get out of bed. His knees are all jacked up. And skates might not hit the same. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to see you on those skates at 75. Yeah. Yeah. At 15, I would definitely say do a little less. Maybe take it easy on me. Yeah. Six, a 70-year-old, I would definitely say, um, man. Remember that whole day you talked about being motivated? (laughs) 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 You're kicking the gear right now. Um, But oddly enough, uh, past, present, future, I'm going to experiment with some of those things creatively. Mm -hmm. But um, the way I look at my career is that I've been in this long enough to now recognize that I have a past. I'm in this present, and the future is in what I am creating and what I believe in before it becomes something that is celebrated. And that's a very fortunate place to be. You know, some people, they have a moment, you know, and then they move on to something else. But I've been invested in this thing, and it's become so many. It's it's given me so many other avenues of business. It's given me so much um, experience and, and, and an ability to be able to spread my wings and diversify who I am and how I think as a human. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the idea of this career is past, present, future for me. And I want to kind of pay tribute uh, to some of the inspirations as well as kind of go back and recognize the thing that now has become inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, be clear of the moment that I'm having and how important it is to be present, to be able to honor and appreciate and acknowledge all the things that you experience, you go through, and you overcome. And then recognize that the commitment to whatever your creative is is leading us into this new space. And you need to... You know, be okay and, and, and understand that you can't do things the same way that you did them yeah. in the past. Yeah. yeah, you can borrow from the passion of it, but there's a new idea of how we talk. There's a new idea of how we communicate. There's a new idea of how we pass even our music, crea- music and creativity uh, around to each other. Right? You've really thought about this. That's my past, present, future. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, and this, this show is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, it will be artistic, but it at the same time will allow you to have a, a good time and celebrate with your friends and family. 
Well, I mean, it wouldn't be shocking for you to have this same kind of star power at 75 because your longevity in this business is so timeless and admirable. What is the secret to not just surviving, but kicking ass in the music industry for as long as you have? (laughs) Uh, Surrounding yourself around creative and um, healthy people um, and recognizing the things that don't necessarily serve your your greater objective in life. Um, You know, I've, I've, I've managed to not look down upon the harder moments that I've had. Uh, I look at them as opportunities to be better. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I think grief and a lot of time, uh, the lack there of being able to forgive yourself for a hard moment that you had, and you might not necessarily even understand why you made the decision that you made. Mm. But if you live in that, then you're never going to get to the resolve. You're never going to get to a better place where you then either learn and also to uh, a lesson for something or someone else. Um, but that is how I think I've been able to sustain that I, you know, I try to get better from the shortcomings and for the moments that I've had, as I said, I'm starting to celebrate them. It's been really hard, you know, cause it's just been about the journey of trying to be seen, trying to be recognized. It's a, it's a, it's a odd uh, industry, you know, that, that we live in and the standards uh, have changed over time. They've gotten better, but earlier it was much, much harder. Hey, man, enjoy recognized. your champagne while you're here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Th- this feels to me. I'm really enjoying talking to you, by the mm-hmm. way. Uh, it, you just feel champagne. For, uh, yeah. Here yeah. we go. Yeah. This, is, this is way better than the last time, my friend. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you. This feels like the best version of Usher. Do you feel like this is the best version of you now? Are you here? I mean, I'm present. So, I mean, I'm the best of me until I'm the other me. <laughs> what, what are you working on most right now? Uh, man, just being a, uh, being the best father that I can, uh, understanding that you have to love your kids differently, each and every one of them. You got to deal with them differently. There's, there's not a, a one-fit-all type situation with kids. Um, you know, trying to be uh, mindful of what, the next 20 to 30 years are going to look like while still being passionate and committed in this moment. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm also too trying to, to make certain that um, I don't think of this as just a short goal, you know, to be, you know, great and celebrated in this moment. The king of something is like, nah, that ain't really the goal for me. I want a kingdom. I mm. want to, I want to build things. I want to, I want to be able to take my creativity and allow it, allow it to span far past just, the outlet that I've had so long, whether it's in, you know, the lifestyle and the things that I, I curate the places that I go. When you come to the show, it's a curation. It's not a show. It's a curated moment that is offering you an aesthetic, something that you hopefully will remember, something that will then lead to something else, something you might wear, something you might hear, feel something you might smell. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, explain to me the logistics of a tour. Um, you sold out six shows in Atlanta. So I was telling these guys, for a guy that's sort of been in the music industry for so long. They I, love me. I, yeah, they do. <laughs> dude. Yeah. They certainly me. do. But You how in does, Atlanta have a beautiful love story. You really do. <laughs> how does that even work, though? Like, um, do they block off an entire week hoping that they're going to fill it or – do they block off one day and then when it sells out, they come to you and they're like, Usher, we can do another one. And they do that six times? Yeah, well, it started off with three. And the idea of this show was to stay in markets long enough to be able to enjoy it. Um, and I plan on doing more than just uh, the show. There are activations that are around these shows as well. Uh, that may Some of them may be uh, in the same arena that the show is going to be in. Some may be just adjacent or, or in the vicinity of it. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of, uh, planning, right? So a year in advance, we say, all right, we're going to go after these certain markets. We have a, a schedule that, that is, let's say 20 some odd, 30 some odd shows. You put those shows on shows on sale. If they do well, then you keep going. We sold out in a few minutes, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And then, or got close to, oh, this is good looking great. So do we take these other shows? Well, can we just stay in the market? Cause for me, I wanted to. I wanted to have um, like concentrated times where I could set my stage up and just take over the take over the arena and not leave. I want you to feel that energy of what it of what my experience is. So if I'm 
at Barclay for five shows. If I'm, you know, at, you know, um, uh, at, you know, in in London, we we did ten shows. We sold out ten. <laughs> so it's like that to me was the next level of uh, my experience as an artist. I, sure, I could have went everywhere, did one show, one show everywhere, but I really wanted to curate something. How do you replenish yourself doing that many shows in a row like that? Because uh, normally the travel time is the downtime for the artist. So if you're staying in a city and like simmering in it. Yeah. And doing back to 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 back shows. <laughs> yeah. Like how do you how do you well, recharge? Well, no, it's not back to back. So okay. We, so so we we we'll, we do a Wednesday sometimes, and then mm-hmm. we'll move over to Friday, Saturday. Okay. Or either it'll be a Tuesday. Oh, a whole we'll day off. Good to- for you. <laughs> 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 but we managed to 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 make uh make the schedule work uh based off of what I established in Vegas because we would do Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, every week. But I would love to know, like, how do you replenish? Because I'm sure you are the type of some person of these, that some. strikes me as a perfectionist because the artist of your caliber. So you're going to put it all out there. Yep. I'm not an artist, man. I'm an athlete. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I, I train and I, I, um, I condition my body before uh, to be able to absorb whatever it is. I'm moving, I'm dancing, I'm skating, I'm singing. All of that is diaphragm and also to core, uh, core building. You understand this. Please. I do. I, I said after the Super Bowl halftime, I said to these guys as soon as I came in, I don't know if people are going to call that the best one, even though I really did. I'm not just saying this to kiss your ass. I think it's the best. It was certainly the most athletic I've ever seen. And I don't know that people realize mm-hmm. the athleticism behind everything you did that night. Yeah. So being able to have an entire staff that travels with me, um, you know, I have uh, an entire gym that basically travels everywhere I go. It has cold dips, hot dips in it. It's got a wow. sauna in it. It's got, you know, weights. It's got bands. It's got, you know, uh, uh, aerobics balls. It's got mats and stuff where I do yoga. And, you know, that's basically how I sustain my body over time. Gotcha. Don't get too excited over there. I know this is your type Man, of chat. you talk <laughs> about health and biohacking and stuff. Dude, yeah. you and I, we, you're going to be here until like 9 o'clock today. <laughs> <laughs> you do cold a, dips. Oh, what's that? You do cold dips. I have, I, I, yes, there. I do. I came in for about four months telling these guys in the morning I would turn the shower on yeah. as cold as it would go for a minute, minute and a half, and I loved it. And then it got cold in Atlanta, and I said, I'll wait till spring. <laughs> <laughs> do you do them? Yeah, it's imperative, yeah. man, especially after you've, you know, done a two-hour show where yep. you're dancing and you might have a, sure. s- a slight twerk or something like that, and you're like, got to manage to work on this. Cold actually just helps to rejuvenate. You go cold sauna, cold sauna, cold sauna. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, Tell us more about um, the album. What do you want people to know about the album? Man, listen, you know, I am the party, first of all. (laughs) That that is, that is. is, Cheers to that. that, (laughs) Cheers to that. There we go. I don't know about y'all, but I'm done with my first one. I was was done the last year. Refill. No, but, um, you know, Kissing Strangers is obviously um, one of the the more incredible records um, on this album. And what a celebration to be able to come back and have this conversation with you, Bert, man. It's really been a homecoming for me in every aspect of my career. I started here in Atlanta. I actually have taken a, a trip around the world and to now come back and have these be the first interviews that I've done for Coming Home, uh, it, it really means a lot to me to be able to share that vision that I did with the world that is Atlanta and be able to come back here and talk about it. Being able to launch my, my album and also to be an independent artist with L.A. Reid, where I started yeah. in Atlanta, it, um, it really is a homecoming. Well, I feel like you are a huge part of those shirts you see people wear where it says Atlanta influences everything. There you go. And the United States of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just here. You know, I was telling these guys, I like to travel, not like you. Certainly not the way you do. Um, but when I travel around the world, it is always, I am always present that wherever I am, there's music from Atlanta being played, specifically you. Like, it doesn't matter what corner of the world that I am in. I was in South Africa not so long ago. I couldn't get away from you. There you are everywhere. <laughs> that must be so amazing for you that that music is worldwide and it has touched so many people in so many different countries. Well, thank you. And thank you all for playing my music. Um, yeah, you know, I've been able to travel and find, you know, the, the algorithm or either the, the, the styles that people, they want. 
you know, after confessions, I began to experiment and try other things to be able to, you know, just kind of spread my wings. With this album, I did the same, you know, with I'm a Piano and um, an Afrobeat, songs like Ruin, songs like Coming Home, and also to being able to feature, you know, uh, with artists who not only have credibility in that space, but have hit records as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's part of the way that you do it. You have to travel. You got to go further than Hilton Head, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Cape Town, uh, North Carolina is where I went last time. Um, how much fear is there or was there when you were putting this album together? I mean, Usher's kind of the gold standard. So when you're putting a new album out, is there any fear? Is there any pressure? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I told you I had a ton of songs for a long time and 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 was reluctant to put them out analysis paralysis you're like well it's going to be good enough mm. is it enough did i get every song does i have enough tempo did you just kind of get to the point where you're like okay let it go hmm. <laughs> you got you got to let it go man. so it was del- um it was uh it uh it it literally paralyzed you for a little while a little bit yeah, yeah. it did and, and again the pandemic slowed everybody down mm-hmm. and my motivation changed again i had a lot of stop starts in the process of creating um so when i finally got to the other side of it i collected you know a healthy amount of music that would then give me an opportunity to tell a full story so when you're listening to it and then you begin to understand oh wait a minute i'm not just listening to one moment of his life i'm listening to a journey that i might be able to identify with because i've gone through it as well as a woman or a man right and that transformation that happened over the series of the four years that i went through making this album i was you know checking in at different points with with uh the from fact a that single man all the way up to a married man on this album <laughs> with yeah. the fact that you've been crushing shows for so long did you have some of those same jitters for the super bowl or did it feel like business as usual uh, it felt like Vegas as usual, <laughs> but uh, business as usual. There's nothing like the 12 minutes that turned into 15 minutes for me. Um, you know, it's really, really hard to curate a f- like a 12 minute show because right? mm. you don't want to miss anything. You want to make certain that people get enough. They want to. You want to make certain that they feel something. Uh, I shared the stage obviously with a lot of people that helped to be able to to make certain that it felt like a full experience uh, and. Yeah, I was, I was, you know, more anticipating getting to the stage and do, doing it, not the jitters. Um, I will say this. Let me see. About two hours prior to hitting the stage, my back locked up. Oh, come Whoa. on. No. Yeah, it was crazy, right? So early that morning, me and Will, we went back to um, – it's funny because I'm shooting a documentary, and I did not allow my cameras to be there because I just kind of mm. woke up and was like, you know what, I got this idea. Will, meet me at the rehearsal space. So I go in there, and I'm rehearsing the moment where I slide through his legs, and I do a split, and something happens. Oh. But I don't tell anybody. I'm like, <laughs> okay. Could anybody <laughs> see it? Could anybody see <laughs> it on your face? No it. one saw so it. Nobody saw it. He and I were the only two people that were there, but I didn't tell him either. And I'm like, okay, cool, <laughs> fine. So we go to rehearsals. We go through the full thing. This is the first time, by the way, that I'm on, because they wouldn't allow you to actually be on the grass. Prior, so I'm like, okay, I hope that I don't slip because now my shoes, do they work with me? I mean, I'm not dancing in cliques, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I had to do that. So I'm like, my back is getting a little tight. So right before getting ready to hit the stage, I literally have to call my trainer to come in. He does not have credentials. So now you got people scrambling all around to try to get this guy in to help open my back for the show. Man, I, I was like literally like, oh my. Have you ever had your back wow. lock up? Uh, not really, no. Okay, cool. You, you don't have that. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm young, man. <laughs> my, age, my age, you don't got to worry about those things, dude. Yeah. pain that, you know, would yeah, have that. definitely killed the whole performance. But, man, thank God for Mike Mencia. He, he works for two guys. He works for me and LeBron James. And, um, humble flex. Who? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, not so right. humble. Yeah. <laughs> Look, my dude, I could keep you in here forever. I just, oh, I got one more question. Look, I, I, you can do whatever you want. I just let you know that there's a dude behind you telling him wrap it up. Oh, I couldn't see it, so it doesn't count. <laughs> 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 All right, so um, at, you were out there performing. How long after the Super Bowl halftime show aired did you actually sit down and watch yourself perform? Mm. Um, Man... You know, I got married, so I didn't really stop to. Yeah, there. yeah, I that we were. Yeah, we found out about that the next day. So when did you actually finally like? It wasn't until the next day. Yeah. That I got a chance to um, take a real look at it 
and like enjoy it. Um, there were moments because there was this 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 you know Alicia Keys and Usher moment that happened. So I was like, wait a minute, we rehearse this the same way every time. Obviously, the world is obviously making something more than what it was. But um, mm-hmm. I had to look at that, and we spoke, and it's like. Okay, we cool. She's like, yeah, no, we cool. <laughs> Spoke to Swiss, it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, but other than that, man, it, um, I didn't really get a chance to enjoy any of it uh, till maybe a week later. Week later, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you watch other halftime shows uh, leading before up leading up to it? Yeah. You did. And yeah. were you pulling some stuff from others and say, I can do that or I'm not going to do that? Or Absolutely. There's tons of inspiration throughout the entire thing. It's an education. If you look at it and you really do understand the past, present, and future idea Mm -hmm. of it, it pays tribute to so many of my influences, the choice of uh, even my songs, and also to um, the dance and the dance and some of the wardrobe. All kind of tributes to the artist and the things that I'd been inspired by. You're proud of it. Very proud of it. Um, Where in your mind does it rank as far as Super Bowl halftime shows go? Uh, it's the greatest ever show that I've ever performed okay. in my mind. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't say in comparison to somebody else's, but I'm going to tell you, yeah. for me, it was one of the highlights of my life, um, and I really enjoyed it. Great. Right. So all of the shows up until that point, I think I was analyzing or trying to figure out how to make certain that everything was perfect. I ran it so many times that by the time it was the moment to go, I could just enjoy it. I literally was on cruise control, other than my back. But other than that, <laughs> I was like, I'm really enjoying this moment. Not often do you get a chance to stop and look and realize. It's almost like this moment that happens in a movie where it's like the fourth wall comes open mm-hmm. and you get a chance to look in the, look at the world. It was that kind of moment for me. You know, there's that old saying that youth is wasted on the young. Don't you wish that we had this perspective back in the day? Yeah. You know? <laughs> Because you certainly have it now, man, and it feels good, right? It does, man. It does. And if we could choose to celebrate uh, all the moments and, and 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 be okay with the journey, I think that we could maybe uh, learn a little bit quicker, maybe for the people who are listening to this, who are eager to get to this place of success. Yo, celebrate your moments where you think you're down just as much as you celebrate the moments when you're up because they mean something, man. They mean something, and they're going to make you better. They're going to make you grand. They're going to make you great. But you have to be okay and forgive yourself and move forward. Get better. Just get better. Try yeah. to be better. I hope That's you right. come back in here. It's been so great seeing Absolutely, you and man. talking to you Well, again. you didn't say anything stupid this time, so you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I launched the dude's career. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> He's going to tell everybody he inspired yeah. confessions now, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure confessions, too, coming soon. <laughs> My dude, it's really good to see you, man. Continued success, and I hope to see you again real soon. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. I had a great time. All right, here's what I was supposed to do during this interview, and it just didn't feel right. We were vibing and having such a good time. Every 10 minutes, I was supposed to, like, break down and give away $100. I couldn't. No. You were still giving away $100. We were just talking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so here are the winners. (laughs) Here, have Usher announce them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to announce them. Ooh, that's fun. Oh, the, are they, they getting? Have, are they getting tickets, or are uh, they? They are all qualified for tickets with a hundred dollars, and one of them will win tickets to one of your forty-two shows in Atlanta. So Christy from Covington, she actually won, and uh, Jackie from my my side of town, Alpharetta, uh, Courtney from Northwest Atlanta, and Teresa, 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 Teresa. Sorry. Teresita. Teresita. See, that's why I had you do the list. I saw that name, and I'm like, if somebody's going to mess it up, it's going to be Usher, not me. Got it. Teresita from Alpharetta, you also to won $100. And, uh, man, this is this has been great. So we, we talked a little bit about the show that's coming. Yeah. Really excited about that. We're also, too, giving away some tickets at some point. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Right now, right? For sure, yeah. You, you want to call them right now and tell them? Let's get it. Caller 99. Call 99. Let's right. go. Call right. You want to stick around and actually do this winner? Let's do it. I okay. Love to. It's 404 741 0097. 
Uh, it's going to take like three or four minutes to get caller 100 on. Can you stick around? Are you? I can hang around a little bit. My mom is listening oh, to right oh, now, cool. probably, yes. too. Oh, here, here. Stick around. Actually, here. your mom is caller 100. She won tickets <laughs> to your show, man. <laughs> All right, so when we come back, got we got 99 t- problems, <laughs> but a call ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Burke Show in the afternoon with the Usher Takeover. It's his radio station. He, we already know this. It's his world. It's his world, so it might as well be his radio station. You let me have it my way, finally. Yeah. Bro. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Well played. Uh, Usher's been in here for an hour, and we thank you for your time. You know, as we're playing more Usher songs, and we were talking about your uh, tour also, we're going to give away some tickets here in just a second. Yeah. How, do, how do you, I've always wanted to ask this, one last question, and then we're done. Um, how do you continue to keep the passion on stage when you have been doing the same song for 20-something years? How do you make it sound like it's the first time that you're doing it? Uh, to act as though it's the first time okay. I'm doing it. Um, to be honest, right, there is a song that everybody's like, you know what, I don't want to do this song again. Mm-hmm. I've never approached it like that. I always uh, I try to think of how I felt when I first decided to do it. And I try to, most of the time, if it's, yeah, because that's normally the song, I'm like, I have to sing this song again. <laughs> yes, you do. You're going to have to sing it forever. You'll, you'll be sad. I mean, you'll still have to sing it. <laughs> you might not move the same, but you're still going to have to sing it. No, but I try my hardest to go back to how I felt when I finally connected, you know, because it was something about that album, something about Confessions. We're celebrating the 20th anniversary yes. of Confessions this year. Bert, thank you so much, man, really. But, <laughs> yo, I'm glad I could be your inspiration. <laughs> no, but, but all of those songs mean so much, so much so that for my festival, um, Lovers and Friends Festival in Las Vegas, I'm dedicating the show to Confessions. Oh, wow. So we'll be performing uh, the, the entire album of Confessions uh, at my festival this year. Oh, he's dedicating it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be front row. <laughs> You're gonna go, this dude, this dude. But every time I perform, yeah, man, it's like you got to pull that energy. And it's at the end of the show, so I'm normally, like, dead tired. Yes. But something about that ATL movement, mm. that ATL energy, it just comes out of nowhere. So you know? if the record industry came to you and they're like, uh, hey, Usher, sorry, we, we have run out of storage on our iCloud. Uh, and we only have room for one Usher song, one Usher song, and it's going to be the one that everybody is going to know, and it's going to represent Usher. What's the song you're allowing them to play for the rest oh of their God, life to for represent? The rest you? of their That's life, it? and there's Jeez. no more Usher songs because they're out of storage. Oh, see, I'm a current dude. I live in the present, so I'm going to say "Kissing Strangers." You better play it, and we're going to keep playing it and keep playing it. And keep playing it. <laughs> That's safe. Okay. All right, so let's give away some tickets here. Look, we're off the clock. I mean, uh, we got done at 10 this morning, so you're doing all the work. We here. got 99 callers, but we're looking for one. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Pause. Is it two? Yeah, we're gonna do 99 and 100. All right, so let me sh- let me let me teach you how radio works. All right, all right you just say, "Hey, Q997, who is this?" All right. Okay. Go for it. Yo, Q ninety nine seven. Who is this? Yeah, this is Brian. Brian Hayes. Nice talking. To, nice here N- to talk to you, man. Nice talking to you too, man. I hate to inform you, but you are the ninety eighth caller. No. <laughs> 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 well, 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 I'm joking. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? What's going on, man? What's going on? I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Absolutely, man. Really happy that uh, you got a chance to call in, man. Um, thank you for hanging in there. How many times did you call back? Oh man, I was calling at least like ten times. Back okay. back seat, man, well, can I kept getting a dial tone. <laughs> We've had callers up that are so young that they don't even know what a dial tone is. I swear, Usher. They're yeah. like, I keep calling. There's something wrong with your radio station. Oh, man. <laughs> nah, nah, I already knew. I've been here before, man. I already know it. I'm, I'm, I'm at work. I had, to, I had to leave work and go outside to the car to talk to you, man. Appreciate it, champ. Your secret safe with us. We won't, we won't narc yeah, on you. Yeah, yeah. All right, you got tickets to Usher yeah. show. Um, hold on one second, and we'll get some more info from you. And we got one more Gosh, to do. I'm so excited right now, y'all. I can cry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, right you're now. really going to cry. So you're really going to cry because... Okay, you got it. Okay. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. You cannot play with my emotions. I couldn't do it, too. You cannot play with my emotions like this. <laughs> what's, your name? what's your name, love? Victoria. Oh, my gosh, y'all. I am talking to Usher in the birthday right now. <laughs> <laughs> Victoria, you going to the Usher show? You going to past, present, future, love? When I tell you, man, I, 
Oh, my gosh. My husband's going to be so hyped because he might just be as big a fan as I am. Hey. Oh, my gosh. That's what's up. Man. You know your voice changes when you talk to women, right? It's very different than it was to do a quick <laughs> couple of minutes ago. Yeah, It does? Yeah, it does. Oh, it man. It does. You're talking real, like, real sultry. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, you want me to change it? Okay, okay. No. <laughs> oh, no, no, you don't. Going. Okay. I mean, keep it. we can keep talking. I mean, how often am I going to talk to Usher? <laughs> <laughs> hey, congratulations. You got tickets to the show, all right? Y'all, I am so hyped. I literally am sitting on the side of the road right now. I am so hyped. I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you for listening to Q99.7. Thanks for hanging out with us with Usher today and you got tickets to the show and he will see you there, holy okay? Holy crap balls. I don't know if I'm on the radio or not right now, but holy S-H-I-T. <laughs> <laughs> if you spell it, it. <laughs> I think if you spell it, it's legal. No, it's not. It's either not. way. It's not. We can spell. Holy fort balls. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> yeah, it is new. We're in the South. Look, we're in Georgia. Sugar honey iced tea. There you, there go. you go. There you go. Usher, what a great time hanging Seriously. out with you, man. So I, much fun. I really hope we can do it again. Next hey, time man. when you're like 70 years old, I'll be like 85. <laughs> we come in and <laughs> my dentures all falling out. Well, just, I, I have a grill. <laughs> <laughs> it's good seeing you, Usher. All right, dog. All right, it's Q99.7. Real, real funny. funny. The Bird Show.